Mr. Tyler Dines. Ben. Also known as Ty. Yep. What are the nicknames you got? We got, uh, well, we got Ty, Tyler, Dines, Dines E. There's been lots of uh, Dines nicknames over the years. Uh, my hockey crew called me Dines E. Okay. But uh, for the most part, I like Dines with Tyler. Okay. Zaddy Dines. We'll start zapping things in here. <laughs> <and everything. laughs> How was the trip down to Florida? Have you ever been here before? I haven't been to Florida since I was probably like eight or ten. So it's okay. been I came with the family a long time ago. It's just great here. It looks a lot it looks the same from what I remember. How's the weather compared from here to back home? Well, considering the winter we've had, it's been like it's been like cool, but it hasn't been the worst. Um, down here has definitely been better. The two days that we were here, um, it was a little breezy. We managed to beat the rain. There was no rain. But uh, having everybody on the beach together moving, the breeze was kind of nice, right? Yeah. Looks like you got a little bit of sun. I got a little bit of sun, I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, was the, uh, how was the event yesterday at Central Therm? Surreal. It was great. Nothing but uh, good friends hanging out, playing games, and just uh, having fun. Honestly, it was great. Yeah, people, people may not know who you are, where you're from, but you're from Canada. I am from Canada. What, we're in Ontario. Yeah. Okay. We're, uh, we, about an hour north of Toronto, which is always a treat. It's a great city. Um, what is that? Aside from that, what's the name of the city? Toronto, where I live. Oh, but you said an hour north of I'm Toronto. I'm an hour north of uh, Toronto, and it's a small town called Orangeville. Orangeville. Orangeville, yeah. Okay. A select few have heard of that name before, but uh, if you're well, local, you probably if know you're local, you've probably heard of it. You usually get a smile. Okay. You are a tactical award winner. Yes, man. Yes. How, how Another was that? surreal experience, my man. It's uh, it was uh, humbling and just awesome to be recognized for all the hard work that you know all of us put in every day on all of our installs. But uh, it, it was great to get some recognition, and even greater to have it from like my lo peers who are out doing the same things day in day out. I know we feed off each other all the time for years, but. Uh, just being there and being a part of it was uh, was amazing, and to actually come home with an award was uh, incredible. That's awesome, dude. incredible. Also, press master. Honestly, it was a uh, it was an insane few days, my man. Uh, <laughs> I, I knew what was coming, but I didn't realize the magnitude of what was coming. Uh, I know my wife was she found it really amusing watching me stew up for the last few weeks before to it, but she said, just relax, it's gonna be fine. It's, it's, it's gonna be gonna great, be fun, right? Yeah. And it was 100% great, it was, it was awesome. Every day there was just amazing events with amazing people, and uh, it, it was awesome to have her included in there as well. Yeah, it's cool that you were able to bring her. It was sure. great, yes. But uh, as for the tactical award, oh man. Thank you very much for the invite. I love all the nominations. Thank you for doing what you do, man. Was, I mean, you're part incredible. of the community, and it was incredible. You know, it's uh, it's a it's a community effort, right? It, it's not just one person doing something. No, so. none at all. We're just guys, and That's we're it. just doing our job. And and I love to just inspire everyone else to want to better themselves and up their install game a little bit. You know, in no way, in no way, shape, or form is it like a a challenge or like a hey, look at this. It's just doing nice work, trying to raise our industry, raise the bar. And uh, How long have you been doing HVAC? <clears throat> well, when I started, I've been in, I've been in an HVAC for 15 years now. Uh, I started out at a fuel company. Let's just say out of high school, I started, uh, I wanted to be an auto mechanic because I loved working on cars. Uh, I quickly realized that wasn't for me. I just didn't like being in, a, in the shop, working under a hoist, like, and working on cars is not like it used to be, you know what I mean? For sure. Like, it's not, it's not that. It's all computers It's now. all chips and boards and plastic covers. Uh, I quickly realized I did not want to work uh, on cars, and then, I, funny enough, I was changing the oil on an HVAC company's truck. And I said, hey, are you hiring? And he said, oh, not right now. And two weeks later, he came right back to the shop and said, you still want a job? And I never looked back. So I managed to get... That was 15 uh, years ago. That was 15 years ago. And uh, I managed to get in with a hydronic guy. Uh, and I managed to learn everything I could. And then was maybe tossed into a lead position sooner than I should have been. But, you know, hit the ball, hit the ground running and, and take it and go. And uh, I learned lots from him. His name was uh, Chris Speck. You probably never heard of him, but I'll give him some credit. Because I wouldn't have got to where I was today without that foundation of 
learn? I feel like the best, the best way to learn is just to th get thrown in to do it, right? So when you kind of get thrown to the wolves, you, try, you end up learning pretty fast. You don't realize how much you don't know until something's not working in front of you, yeah. right? But uh, what was nice about him was, I'll just say this, he smoked a lot, he took a lot of breaks, so I found, I got my jobs done and then I found myself eager to move on. So once he figured out that I would start doing more of his work, he did less and less, I did more and more, and then eventually like there wasn't much that we hadn't done, right? But what I loved the most was uh, that he was on site, he was there. So he was in the truck, I had no fear of diving into anything because I knew he was 20 feet away ready to answer questions or come in and help and and then I found myself fixing more of his mess ups than my own sometimes but uh, uh, the, the last place I worked at I got a lot of opportunities to learn and build a lot of great projects and then I managed to get tied in with uh, Brandon Farr and it's all been up uphill from there who, who I met on this trip yes seems like seems to be a pretty great guy he is an awesome guy um, so much respect for him so much respect for him he, he'll, he will hands down drop everything he's doing put the tool belt on and come in and run circles around all of us now and that's that, not obviously not the guy you got a job with 15 years ago no okay no this is this is the new one that, that learning place it was a great place to learn it was a fuel company in my local area and uh, the great part about that was I got a chance to learn a little bit about everything in the residential side sure. right I got a chance to just get everything from propane tank installs to garage heaters to basically everything. We, we even did some crop dryer stuff like that. Things that some people wouldn't even like comprehend. But uh, playing around with propane and natural gas, that's what was nice about being the fuel provider was like you were the inspector. So you didn't have to answer to anybody. Now you're dealing with like Enbridge, Direct Energy, fuel co like the fuel company, right. you gotta call them, they're coming in, they gotta approve your Third stuff. party inspection. Yeah. Exactly, that, that was probably the biggest joy about being the fuel provider. But uh, that's okay. We, we moved off out of there and we moved on to bigger and better things. And uh, it's So how long have you been with FAR? So FAR, uh, I think we're, we're just sneaking up on four years. Uh, I've been with him for six now, five or six years now. And uh, it's just been a great experience. It's, uh, we have a phenomenal team. Uh, everybody gives it their all every single day. There's no excuses. There's no like, how to try to get out of work. You know, right. like the difficult things, everything we do is difficult, right? So everybody just hammers down. Yeah, I'm looking at some of the projects that you're tackling and I'm just like, holy crap, dude. I mean, how long do these projects even take? I would be lying if I said it wasn't intimidating on a daily basis, but uh, nothing's gonna beat us. We're gonna figure it out, right? Um, these projects, they vary, but I, I definitely a week, two, um, the Picture Perfect award-winning one, um, that was a solid month. And that was five air conditioners, five furnaces, a full boiler retrofit, like everything. So like it was, it wasn't gonna get much faster, but that was a hectic month. So yeah, it was a, a that, that was a big one. But what you gotta consider, like me alone, that was, that was almost 200 hours of me and a helper. And then that's not even considering how much work Brandon put into the quoting, parting, getting it all ready for me. So like those kinds of installs are hundreds of hours of work. Now when you show up to a job site, how well prepared is the job site? Like are all the fittings that you need there or do you just have a truck that's just like absolutely slammed with parts? <laughs> Both. <laughs> okay. I, have a, I have a long box sprinter and it's, uh, there's a lot of just amazing- I love tool, sprinter a lot of, I, I should show, If you haven't seen it, it it's, it's hard to have a show work truck. <laughs> I try, but to have a stocked and clean and, and it's a full-time position, you know? Um, Brandon is uh, very good about knowing exactly what I need. Like he's, he, he, not only does he like selling equipment, but he knows the system. He's had the infield experience. Okay, so that's, great. He, that's he, great. He's very aware of what we need. And we seem to be on the same page where we've got our systems down to almost like, if you look at some of them now, they're, they're pretty similar. Like we found a style that we like, the design that we like. So when you quote a system, it's a four, six, eight zone system. If you can get that system down to a, a solid design, the quote is the same for the most part. So he has me, I'm gonna say 90% of yeah, what I need. a system. 90% of what I need on the daily, like just ready. And then as I start, I realize the things I need to alter or change or just, you know, I thought of a great idea, let's do it this way. And he, right. yes, yes, he's, he's never said no. 
that guy, it's, it's hard to find someone that might have a little more, I'm not going to say OCD, but a little more perfect in him. And it's I nice. Think, I think it's refreshing, though, to find, you know, that you work with a guy or you work for a guy, right, that is open to that kind of thinking, right? Right. And just says, hey, man, whatever you think we need to do, like, that's what we're going to do. I, I love it. Yeah. And most, most employers don't do that. They're like, that's not how we do it. We're in and we're out and we're cutting costs and this and that, yep. you know, and it's yep. just like, and I feel like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with cutting costs and, and trying to be as efficient as possible, but I also feel like there's something to be said for like delivering that extra layer of craftsmanship where you can take a step back and just be like, whoa, this looks amazing. If I, if I was going through all these installs and I didn't care what I was doing, that would be a lot of work for not a lot of joy, you know yeah. what I mean? And like my, my biggest, I love the before and after sometimes because some people don't realize like what was there before they just see a, a perfect install or like a nice install but like there's a journey there you know what I mean and a lot of struggle and a lot of uh, a, lot, a lot of overthinking I'm not gonna lie well and you wouldn't be an award winner if you didn't care right 100% so 100% walk me through just because I'm curious to know right I'm walk me through you get an email talking about you're a nominee for for the award show right were you planning on attending the awards prior to that? I would have been there the, the last time too, but uh, travel restrictions at the time were limiting me for that one. Gotcha. But uh, I would have been there in a heartbeat and uh, there was no way I was missing this one. And the fact that uh, I was nominated for something, it just made it all much more better. So you get an email saying that you're uh, a nominee for an award. Uh, did you know what award and what was your reaction to the email? Honored, first of all. like sent it to my wife immediately I was like we're going like this is awesome and just to be just to be nominated with so many great guys they're all winners honestly like um, there was a lot of emotions a lot of emotions that went into it so coming into the show you didn't know what not what category you were nominated we for. had no idea nobody knew who was nominated nobody knew like we knew the categories from prior but uh, no one had an idea of anything so it, it was a surprise for everybody, I think, and that, that added to the joy. That was a lot more fun too, because it was a it was a shock. Every every nomination, every every award was was interesting, and it kept you intrigued because you you didn't know who was coming up. That's cool. So did you have? It was just you and your wife at the show. Yes. Okay. Yes, we would have brought uh, Brandon was gonna come, but uh, it was his son's birthday, like that day. So he, you get it. He wanted to be there, and, he, and I know he was sitting there on his couch with the laptop open, and he was ready before the show even started. That's he watched awesome. the entire thing. He was cheering us on. He, he wanted to be there. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah I heard, uh, I think it was Mike Frass, uh, his mom his mom and dad were there, right? I think so. Yeah, yes, yes. and I think she was, like, getting emotional when she saw the, his nomination roll up onto the screen and stuff. I just thought that was super cool. It's funny you say that. My mom was recording it from the couch at home, and I could hear the kids in the background. And then as soon as they said my name, you, know, you heard her go, <laughs> you heard a little sob go on. And so we get to tease her a little bit about that. That's, That's funny. awesome. That's awesome. So you're killing the game, right? Uh, what, what are your plans? Like, what's next? What's next for the award-winning Tyler Dines? That's a great question because uh, I have spent years trying to get that image. Do you know what I mean? And, and there's been so many, we won't call it like mentors or inspiration of local guys that like I've been following for a decade that bouncing ideas off of and I've watched them grow and watched me grow and, and together we're just, it, it's, I'm not going to say it's a competition but it's like a, it's a friendly competition, right? Sure. And, and I love pushing all the guys. I hope that that doesn't anger anybody and it just inspires them to take that extra step. Well, I think you know, we've and, done a really good job of creating a community amongst us, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the the camaraderie is something that's been lacking in our industry for a real long time. And I'm not sure how it is in Canada or how it was in Canada, but that's how it is in the United States, right? It's like you pull up to a gas station and all of a sudden it's like, uh, Oh, that guy, right? And it's like, instead you should be like, hey man, what are you guys working on today? You know what right. I mean? Like, how's it going? Like, are you guys happy with where you're at? Like, you know, how's the environment at your workplace? How's the culture? Like, I might be looking for a change. You know what I mean? Like, these are conversations that should be being had between you don't know service who's, guys. You don't you know? know who's having a good time and who's not having a good time. And, you know, they could, they could be, we could be a diamond in a rough being treated rough, the beaten bad, and he, you woo him over, you realize that he was just about to quit his career. Yep. And it was just because he was working with, right? Yeah, like, man. 
Well, yeah, and, and you know, the camaraderie is really important, and I know that, you know, a lot of people have made, I've personally made a lot of really good friends, right, and, and just kinships through every all of this, but I know you were, uh, you've been talking to, to Mike Cameron for like 10 years, and you just met him for the first time when we were in Chicago together, yeah, right? Man, that, I mean, how, how was that? That was great, and, and when you meet all these guys, you've had so many conversations with them so many times that like they do, they feel like like just great friends. You know, when you don't see a friend for two years and you meet up with them and it doesn't even feel like two years passed, yeah. it's exactly how it all felt. Like these are people that I talk to constantly. That's constantly. awesome. And, but Mike, there's not a morning almost I don't wake up with a message from Mike. Like he's, we're always just That's cool. sending memes, sitting in chats, questions, you know, he's, he's definitely a brother in the industry. And uh, it was, it was great to meet up finally. Yeah, it was a special moment for sure. I think it was a special moment for both of us. Yeah, it's really awesome to see what has unfolded in the last, you know, five years, you know, six, seven years, in this community on social media, and really the power that we've utilized social media, right? Because social media can be very become very toxic, right? And uh, can really just kind of ruin people's lives, essentially, right? Especially when you're like. Uh, people are being bullied and stuff like that and I find that uh, there's definitely bullies out there in our industry uh, on social media but I really feel like we've done a really good job of cultivating this community that's just been really good about lifting each other up and just building genuine relationships oh, right and, and helping each other and being able to, to learn you know and you and you and tactical are like a prime example of why that's happening like, oh, I appreciate that. honestly man it's it, that, that that just bringing everybody together in such a positive way making that little effort all the time, huge effort, but uh, it, it, that's, the, that's what makes the difference, you know what I mean? And you're right, there's gonna be, there's gonna be haters no matter what we do, right? Uh, just brush them off, just carry on, ignore it. There's more positive than negative, let's, let's say that, right? Yeah, for sure. I'm just a regular guy, dude. <laughs> just regular guys, man. Yeah. I'm just a regular HVAC guy. It's, it's very surreal when you come meet everybody and everybody wants to come meet and like, they, they really build you up like it's a big thing. But like you said, we're just, we're just a guy. And, and I, love, I love it. I'm so humbled that so many people are inspired and like wanted to meet me. It, it's weird to think that people wanted to. Yeah. Can let me take a picture with it's, you, Ty? It's, it's very humbling, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I'm still getting used to it, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's definitely like a level of people who are celebrity status in this industry, right? Mike Flynn, Jeff J. Dem, uh, Brian Orr, yep. uh, Eugene Silberstein. I mean, like all these guys are just, they're legends so far because social media has kind of lifted them up to be that, you know what I mean? But um, but quite frankly, I mean, they've, they've earned the position, if you will, right? By just being masters of their craft. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man, I just want to see great things unfold in this industry you know right. what i mean and whatever i can do to help facilitate that you know i love this trade i just want to leave it in a better place than it was when i found it yes and uh yeah man i just and i love people you know what i mean i just want to see people succeed and just prosper in life you know and um and i think hvac has a great way of creating a, a great living and helping people prosper right a great trade uh, it, as far as making a living, it is for sure. But you also have to do a lot of personal growth too. So, what is one of the ways that you that you do personal growth? Like, you read books. You know, I find it hard to find any time for like myself and reflection and stuff. I I, I probably lack in that because uh, by the time I put all that effort in during the day, I commute a fair distance. There's a lot of reflection just driving, which is sometimes stressful but uh, for the most part I come home and it's like dad mode you know what I mean and, sure. and, and we get into that and I try to give I'm not there in the morning because I had to work early but I do my best to be home for dinner and, and help out with the wife help out with the kids so there's only a short couple hours there every night I get to see them they're growing like weeds right but you, I definitely like back when you asked a minute ago about like what's the next plan I as for like installs and HVAC, no, I don't think anything's going to change. I still am going to give it every single thing I got every single day, and the installs are still going to be perfect. We're going to we're going to keep raising that bar. We're going to keep inspiring everybody. But uh, that's some definitely something I need to start focusing a little bit more on is like my mind. You know what I mean? My mind. good for you, man. And I think being aware of it is key. Right. I think I'm becoming a little more aware of it because, like you said, as as of the like, what do you do now after you win Picture Perfect, right? Like that was, 
Uh, you win it again. <laughs> I would love to, honestly, but uh, we might upset a little more people. I would love to pass it on to another deserving person For because sure. there are so many people there. There's never doing... been somebody to win the award twice, so you know. All right, challenge accepted. We'll give it. A... <laughs> it's not like I'm not going to try, but I, I would love to see someone else rise up and get that experience because it's it was awesome. It would be kind of awkward though if you come back to present the award and you and present I just it stand to yourself. up. Yeah. yeah, that would be that would be a little awkward for sure. So, you'd be like, yeah, there's something kind of fishy about this whole thing, you know? Yeah. So that's awesome. Awesome, dude. Um, if you could leave the audience that's watching this with a couple sentences of advice, what would it be? Um, well, one, don't hesitate to change your career if you're really interested. Um, give it all you got. Don't be scared to ask questions and get into it. Uh, if it were easy, everybody would do it. So let's go do it. Like, that's a great one. I love to live by. You know, like I always say, if it was going to be easy, everybody would do it. But we're out here doing it, and give it your all. You're not wrong. Give it your all. Awesome, dude. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, I appreciate you. Congrats man. on the win. Thank you very much. Yeah. And it was a pleasure meeting you in Chicago. Pleasure spending a couple of days here with you. We've yeah, had some so great man. chats. There's going to uh, be more to come, man. Yeah. I, I hope that's. Uh, I hope this opens up a lot of windows, you know what I mean? But more friendships, more interactions, but uh, you were definitely a big part of that. And I thank I you very much, you, my man. Appreciate you, brother.